41 years ago, NASA sent a satellite into space to better understand our solar system. This happened about a month after I was born. That satellite was Voyager 1. Six years ago, it was the first man-made object to leave our solar system and go into interstellar space. The engineers that designed Voyager 1 believed it was gonna report back to Earth for three to five years. We're still getting data today. What's even crazier to me is the onboard memory of Voyager 1 was 40 kilobytes. That's basically a Word document. Right? Like all those pictures y'all gonna take today on your smartphone wouldn't fit on Voyager 1. A lot has happened since we put this probe into space. We've commercialized the internet, everybody has a smartphone, almost every school has a 3D printer. To say the last 41 years in the realm of technological advancement has been significant would be a understatement. But the next 41 years of technological advancement is gonna make the last 41 years look insignificant. And one of the things that is gonna be driving this technological advancement is artificial intelligence, AI. What is AI? Now, if you're older than me, you're gonna say, how 9,000? That's that computer with the creepy voice <laughs> that took over the, the spaceship in that movie, 2001 Space Odyssey. If you're younger than me, you're gonna say Roomba. You know, that vacuum cleaner that you know, cleans the floors by themselves, right? Let me give you a better definition of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is computational technology that works and reacts in human-like ways. Computational technology that works and reacts in human-like ways. Computational technology is just any device that makes calculations based on figures and quantities. And the way a machine could react in human-like ways is visual perception, speech recognition, and translations between different languages. All of y'all have already been using AI, by the way. Raise your hand if you used a mapping app on your phone to get here today, right, AI. I wanna see a show of hands if you've ever purchased something based on a recommendation from Amazon Prime or Amazon Video. <laughs> a lot more hands went up, <laughs> right, that's AI. How many of y'all, your favorite song right now was recommended to you based on your listening habits on Spotify or Pandora? Right? All of that is artificial intelligence. Now artificial intelligence, the implications of it are much larger than just your purchasing decisions. Artificial intelligence is going to help us ensure humans can live longer and healthier. It's gonna help nations be safer and more secure. And it's going to help us reestablish balance between humans and our natural environment. Google has a company called DeepMind. DeepMind can detect 50 types of eye disease based on a 3D retinal scan. Once they get through all of their research, they're gonna be able to help people all over the world prevent becoming blind. I spent nine and a half years as an undercover officer in the CIA. I was the dude in the back alleys at four o'clock in the morning collecting intelligence on threats to our homeland. I know the intelligence community could use artificial intelligence to make the world safer. We could have detected Russia having a buildup before they went to invade Ukraine. A human cannot detect all of the people, all of the vehicles that would be used in a buildup before you go and invade in another country. I sit on the House Intelligence Committee and we had a hearing with the director of NGA, that's the National Geospatial Agency. This is the federal entity that reviews and looks at all of the moving data, all the images. He said in one theater, one sensor collects the equivalent of three seasons of NFL football games at high definition. For the next 20 years, he would need 
8 million analysts in order to handle all the data that they're going to be able to get. Humans can't do that, but AI can. Imagine in the realm of agriculture, there are programs right now that are analyzing soil deficiencies, analyzing weather patterns in order to help us feed more people by using less land, less water, less energy, and less labor. The investments in artificial intelligence cannot be understated. China, Canada, United Arab Emirates, the UK, France, these are just some of the 18 countries that have national strategies on artificial intelligence in order to figure out how are they going to survive in the age of AI. There's five other countries that are working on national strategies, but the United States of America is not one of them. To understate not having a strategy on artificial intelligence, I, 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 you can't do that. Whoever makes the first early investments in artificial intelligence is going to be driving international norms on this technology. They're going to be deciding what role governments have in oversight of the use of AI as well as the ethical implications of AI. Let's take warfare. Should a machine be able to kill a human without a human being involved in that process? Should a machine be able to kill a machine? Should an algorithm decide how long somebody goes to prison if they have committed a crime? Should an algorithm decide whether or not somebody is able to get out of prison? These are some of the ethical questions that we're going to have to ask, and if the United States abdicates our leadership in this area, then that void, that vacuum, is going to be filled by an authoritarian country like China. China does not care about privacy. China does not care about civil liberties. We have to be the ones working with our allies to make sure that we know how this technology is going to be used in the future. Now, there's been six hearings in Congress on artificial intelligence. My committee I chair on, on IT with my partner, Robin Kelly from Illinois, we've held half of them. We're going to continue to push to make sure our country has a strategy on AI, but there's something that we can all do right now to make sure we're prepared. And that's making sure we have a workforce that is ready to take advantage of the opportunities the world of a the age of AI is going to allow us. A AI researcher gets paid seven figures. There's not enough of them. They usually have a PhD or a master's. The fundamental building block of being successful in AI is coding. And right now, in the United States of America, the pipeline to produce people that can code start in high school. However, it is not meeting the task. There are, in just Texas, these numbers are just for the Lone Star State alone. There are 40,000 jobs that have gone unfilled that require some kind of computing in Texas. Texas only produced 2,700, let's call it 3,000, computer scientists. Right? Only 18% of those were women, by the way. What's even worse, only 9,000 kids took the AP computer science course in high school. AP computer science, that's the course you take and get college credit. I think the number there is about 25% were, were women. Right? Only 399 high schools out of 2,000 provided computer science. Parents, 90% of parents say they want their kid to learn computer science in school. But only 40% of our schools actually have computer science. The problem is, there is not computer science teachers hanging out in coffee shops waiting to get tapped on their shoulder to say, hey, we need you to come work. So we have to make sure that we are training current teachers to do this. And I believe the pipeline should start in middle school. 
One of the things I'm most proud of during my time in Congress is working with the UT Center for STEM Education and a nonprofit called Bootstrap to train seventh and eighth grade algebra teachers to introduce coding into their classroom. We worked with 16 school districts, trained 40 teachers, and now thousands of kids have been exposed to coding in South and West Texas when they wouldn't before. Kids that take computer science in high school are six times more likely to study it in college. Women that take coding classes in high school are 10 times more likely to pursue it in college. So we need to increase, increase that through, throughput to make sure we have folks that can code and to make sure that we're able to take advantage of the opportunities of the future. So if you're a superintendent, figure out which one of your campuses can pull this off. If you're a principal, talk to your teachers and see which one are ready to take on this challenge. If you're a teacher, raise your hand and say, I'm in, I'm committed, I want to take advantage of this. If you're a parent, Talk to your school and say, I want to make sure my kid gets access to this. And if you're a student, tell your parents, I want to be prepared for jobs that don't exist today. If you're a computer scientist, find the closest middle school to your house. Go in there and say, hey, I'm willing to help your teachers answer questions that they may not know how to answer. And donors can always find organizations that are providing technology into these schools. The bottom line is this. If we want to survive and thrive in the age of AI, we have to make computer science the priority in our educational system. I learned a Swahili proverb from a friend of mine who's an MMA fighter. And he said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And the only way we're going to solve this problem and make sure our country, make sure our kids are ready to survive and thrive in the age of AI is if we actually work together. Thank you all.